One of Vue's most useful features is vModel. It creates a two-way data binding between a ref and an input, but can also be used between components. Using vModel on a component is the same as passing a ref as a prop and listening for an update event to a change our original ref. Then all our child component has to do is define our prop, define the event we're emitting, and whenever we want to change our value, we just need to emit an update event with our new value. So through props and emits, this child component has its state managed by the parent. But I can already hear the comments saying this isn't recommended anymore. And you're right, since view 3.4, this can be replaced with the define model macro, which does the same exact thing. Except it doesn't. So what does define model actually do? If we throw our example into the view playground, we can see the compiled output. We have a prop called open, we're emitting an event called update open, but the one difference here is that we have this const open equals use model. And this returns a ref that is in sync with our prop value. And that's why code like this works. Define model here returns a ref, that ref is synced with our input, and this ref is also in sync with our prop. It uses a watch effect to update whenever our prop changes. And whenever we set this ref with dot value, for example, it emits the update event. And this sounds the same as what we had before define model. We're using props as our value and emitting update events to change it. But there's a big difference here. Instead of using that prop directly, we're using a local ref that is synced with that prop. So instead of having all of its state controlled by its parent component, it actually has its own state that it keeps in sync with whatever we pass into the vModel. And if we don't pass a vModel, it still has its local state. And for me, this is the part of define model that I slept on when I first heard about it. I thought the most hyped thing was that we didn't have to write as much boilerplate, but it's actually the fact that we get this local ref that unlocks a lot of new patterns. Let's take a look at this example. We're building a collapsible component and we have a button that controls the visibility of a slot. With this basic usage, it makes sense for it to track its own open state. But what if we also wanted our parent component to be able to toggle our content? Well, if we were just using define props and define emits, we'll say that open state is controlled by a V model, and then our parent component will manage the open state for this component. So while this works, it means that we always have to pass a V model, even if our parent component doesn't have any special logic. I know that all V developers have written this code before, where we create an is open value or something, and its only purpose is to be passed as a V model to a component. Define model lets us write less of this type of code. It means that if our component has its own ways of controlling its state, like our toggle button, it can handle all of it locally and we don't need a passive vModel. And then if we want to manually control our component from the outside, that's when we can use vModel. And this pattern of allowing our components to be controlled or uncontrolled is used in a lot of UI libraries. For example, in Next UI, this is all the code we need to get a popover component. Its open state will be managed in the component itself. But if we wanted to do something like open our popover with a shortcut, then we can use vModel. Using define model in this pattern allows you to write components that have a simpler syntax. You only need to pass a vModel when you need that extra control. And otherwise, you can just use that component and let it manage its own state. Well, I hope this cleared up why define model is so useful, and it's not just because we're lazy and want to write less code. If you made it to the end, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.